towards a central location, while also reducing pressure on surface water. Definitely, protecting our planet starts with you and I. It is in the light of the above that I wish to especially welcome you all to this learning experience. And in closing, I want to say that today is not for all speeches, especially on my part, standing in as the Vice Chancellor. <laughs> so I would like to appreciate the Dean, College of Natural and Applied Sciences, and her team, especially the planning committee, for the success we have anticipated of this uh, program and for the effort we have put into making this a great success indeed. I wish to charge our students and I'm pleased that many of you are here today to please listen attentively to this lecture as voices of authorities like this are not common places. You are definitely laying the foundation for your own successful professional practices after your learning experience here at Adele's Lester. Thank you all and God bless everyone. Thank you. Mr. Vice Chancellor Sir, deeply represented by the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Asunaya Okoko. It is my sole pleasure this afternoon to read the citation of the guest lecturer, Professor Joseph Adeyi Odowopela. Guest lecturer Sir, please step forward and remain standing for the reading of your citation. In the contemporary global landscape, a discernible trend emerges, emphasizing the world's yearning for individuals who stand resolute in their convictions, even in solitude. Leaders characterized by unwavering courage, purpose, and security are pivotal, embodying a readiness to embrace the unknown. May 3rd, 1963, in the sleepy but rapidly developing town of Omiyatu, near Ibadan, the local government area of your state in Nigeria, late Mr. Owen Adelika Olodela and his mother and wife, I think this is Elizabeth Ajibike Olodela, were blessed with a baby boy named Joseph Adeli Adisa Olodela. The boy is now Professor Joseph Adeyi and an academician of national and international repute, a grassroots mobilizer, political scientist, social crusader, human rights activist, and an epitome of celebrated achievement, whose contributions to the social political landscape of his community and not be written off. His health constitutes great blessings to the black race. The local fella is happily married and blessed with children. The local fella attended Hope Central Primary School for me at between 1969 and 1975 before proceeding to a United Christian Secondary School for me at between 1976 and 1981. He later proceeded to the University of Ibadan between 1982 and 1986 to earn his bachelor's local government area of gold and number states as a physics teacher and thereafter studied for and earned his master's 
in the year 1987 and PhD solid earth physics in the year 1995, respectively. <laughs> Professional life. Continuing, he lectured at the Department of Physics, University of Ibadan, between 1991 and 2003 and later joined the services of the Federal University of Agriculture, Una Abel Kuta, first on a sabbatical appointment from 2003 to 2004, then as an associate professor and head of department from 2005 to 2007. which include the certificate and seismic hazard assessment obtained from Potsdam, Germany, a certificate in water resources in Flamburg, Germany, and a certificate in microprocessors obtained from the United Nations University Rome, Italy, as well as the International Centre for Theoretical Physics, Italy, among other things. Professor Lozabella has since successfully trained more than 25,000 students and has supplied over 50 DSM projects and more than 15 PhD projects, some of whom have become professors and associate professors. In the course of his academic career, he has more than 70 publications to his credit. Two of which are being used by university students in Germany today. His scholarly works have been cited by 700 foreign journals and read by over 15,000 global people. With a passion to live, lift the fortunes of his community and people and with the desire to right societal wrongs while promoting freedom and social justice, Olo Fela joined active politics in the year in the 1980s. His sole objective remained an advocacy for the improvement. Responsible and effective governance. The democratic professor has served different parties and governments in various capacities, which include national delegates, National Republican Convention, 1990, member governing council, or your state's college of education, or your 2000. Two thousand and three. Chairmanship aspirant, all Nigerian People's Party, ANPP. He won the controversial election conducted by the then Oyo State Governor, His Excellency Senator Rashidi Ladoja, in the year 2007. He was appointed by the Governor, His Excellency Senator Abiola Ajibobi, as Transition Committee Chairman. Local government from 2011 to December 2014. He was also appointed as the Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology for your state from June 2016 to September 2018. Federal Character Commission Commissioner representing on your state from 2020 till date. Member Police Recruitment Board 2003 to date. Awards and honors. To the glory of God, Professor Olofela has received several awards, including number one, overall best performed local government chairman in Nigeria. And again, 2012, and the 19th edition of National Award for Excellence in Grass 
grassroots leadership, presented by Grassroots Leadership Center Abuja. Overall, best performed the whole of in Nigeria 2012 on what? Stroke Education at the 10th edition of the All Nigerian Local Government Chairman Merit Award 2012 by Mentors for Education. Centered by the Yoruba Youth Development Council. Oyo State Commissioner of the Year at the 2017 Miss Oyo State Beauty Pageant. An award presented by Silverstone Communications. Prestigious Award of Ambassador of Ethics and Conscience. Emerged as one of the 15 most inspiring personalities in Nigeria, according to the Guardian newspaper. <laughs> Oyo State Commissioner of the Year at the 2018 Oyo Herald Magazine Annual Lecture and Merit Awards. Award of Excellence at the 2018 Prominent Oyo People's Award by Cornerstone, Cornerstone Media International. Mr. Vice Chancellor Sir, thank you, represented by our Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Akunaya Okoko. I present to you today our guest lecturer, Professor Joseph Adenili of the World Thank you very much. The owner of Toyota Land Cruiser, PR 700 BX, NSF 174G, to repair, please. Thank you very much, sir. First and foremost, I thank God Almighty for the opportunity to be here today. And um, I'm also happy to be here with one of the legacies of one of the most prominent Nigerians, a former president, Abraham Pasadion. And I thank the manager of the institution for the invitation of the vice chancellor. Who is a little absent in order to attend to other official matters? We thank the Deputy Vice Chancellor for the time given to us. And uh, my chief host, the Dean, College of Natural Sciences, I thank you. Uh, not in order of protocol, the University of Nigeria is part of me. I thank all the staff of Honors uh, and the University Community. Do we have Nigerian students here? Do we have Nigerian students? <laughs> I think I, I want to address you in particular. You know, so that is the essence of uh, today's lecture. The groundwater exploration, sustainability and life. The lecture is classified into three parts. The technical aspect, then uh, some of my own little contribution, then the component aspect. 
you know. So before you talk about ground water, you must talk about the interior of the earth. As we are sitting down, we can say we are sitting on extremely hot, but unknown to us, interior of the earth. Because essentially, the earth itself is divided. If you look at it as a group, if you look at it as a group, this is not uh, essentially to go less as you that it is a group. As a sphere, you have the layers. The earth itself is the layers. Then you have the center, which we call the core. The core is solid. That's that center. Then surrounded by the molten part. So we have what we call the inner core and the outside outer core. You know. Then uh, you have followed by the mantle. You have the cross. Why are we measuring that one? Because where you get groundwater is beneath the surface of the earth. But where you are exploring is extremely small. Because the radius of the earth is more than 6,000 kilometers. So, where human beings have ever been is less than 20 kilometers. So, when you compare depth of 20 to about 6,000, then you know that you are dealing with extreme layers, extremely small. You know. So, that's what I'm saying. The groundwater is present beneath the earth surface, in rocks and pores, in fractures of rock formation. About 30% of all available fresh water in the world are groundwater. A unit of rock of, of oscillated deposit is called aquifer. When can you yield a usable quantity of water? When you are looking at groundwater, you must bear in mind two things. When you have rainfall, some will populate into the ground. Some will run off as run off water, some will be evaporated. You know that the whole system is almost constant. Yeah, in, yeah. Then in the percolated water, you have what called the saturation and non saturated part. The outer part is non saturated. The inner part is saturated. Then the layer that is the bed, in the other thing, not saturated and saturated is what we call to us, water table. What do we call it? What do we call it? You are not asking you. You are not asking you about the. You are not asking for students. We are students here. What do we call it? Eh? Water table. Here. When you are talking to get 
Grande batalha do que em vive em vive e a comunidade e chefe da equipe da África da Atapaz e se pode levar para a chefe very very part you know of the chefe is the cross and the tip the tip part of that one is where you have your brown water very very part you know of the chefe Now, when you look at that diagram, I want you to look at that broken line in white. I hope you have seen it. Have you seen it? Are we sleeping? Are we still alive? Okay. So if you are still alive, you know, the, when the water populates, that white part, you have the upper part, you have the bottom part, and you can see that bridge content. That is where water is trapped there. There are some elements of water before, before you get to that blue part. That blue part is what we call the aquifer. Okay? And there we have the saturated water. At the top, we have the unsaturated water. That unsaturated water is also useful. It's the one that is being used by plants through the capillary rice and so forth and so on and so forth. You know, so uh, the that broken green color too shows the water thing. You know, and uh, you can have what you call uh, you have the lake there, you have the river, you know. The region above water table, where water rises due to the capillary forces in the porous water, is what we call the capillary fringe, you know. And uh, under that water table, as I told you that we have four. We have saturated plates, concentrated plates, and I have also told you something like about Africa. What do you understand about Africa? Anybody? But I wish they are alive. Are you following me? I'm here for the students. Are you following me? Okay. So, when you look at that off. You have color. Okay? You said that's a part of it. Above this, above it is non saturated part. Below it is saturated part. And you can have two types of aquifer here. You have a confined aquifer. Then you also have of fine aquifer. Now, the aquifer that is used to, you can get, you can use ground water when you dig your well. Most of the time, you get to the uh, water table first, where you get your water. But when you get it, when you go to power, you can get to your aquifer. So I'll talk about the confined and non-confined aquifer. You know. Then let's look at contamination. Because you do everything on the surface of the earth, then that means that even when you have the contaminants, they can populate. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Do you know why I ask the question? I've told the deputy vice chancellor. He said, when you are teaching an adult, whatever you want to say, you must say it in the first 17 minutes. If you don't say it in the first 17 minutes, you may be wasting your time. Because the adult will start thinking about his friend or enemy, about the wife or the children. You know, so I know that you are also adults are making effort so that we can. Make quick understanding of why 
واخيرا so look at that top part where we have contaminants that contaminants can also percolate please look at that that very well that contaminant can percolate into the ground when it percolates what is this right first? It's side our particle, isn't it? Can you see? Do we have contact? Do we have contact? Technical. So I technical. Anyway, we have, I mean, if you can't see this diagram, what else are you see? Now, what I'm saying is that we have the contaminant at the top and the populates down with that arrow. Look at there, the, 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 the parallel arrow. You know, there are two aquifers there. We have the unconfined aquifer, which are for the first way. Have you seen it? Are you following it at all? Then we have the second wave. Which one is deeper? The first or second? Eh? How about the other? I hope I'm not talking to myself. Which is deeper? The first and second? Thank you. Now, when you look at that first, although it's also an aquifer, or common aquifer, that contaminants we get there. Are you, are you following the flow? So that when you draw water out there, you will be, be getting contaminated water. But the second one, it, you know, reaches the confined or artificial aquifer. That contaminant is not getting there. That water is safe. Can you see the difference? Can you see the difference? That means you cannot, that, but we have contaminants everywhere, but we have strategy to overcome the contaminant. Uh, I've spoken about that. Then, when you are talking about aquifer, there are properties that you look at which has to do with porosity and permeability. What do I say? Again. Again. I didn't see by if. If there has to be that like a view of reality, you can always say, I have. Thank you. You can always say that ah, when well, the man said porous and permeability. When you are talking about porous, that means either you have, you have space or void, then you have some parts, look at solid. So you can, in this instance, you can have water through the pores. The one that, the, the medium that you always investigate is the one that you have when you are digging. So that have sand or gravel. Because for sand is more porous and gravel. Then it's also there is uh, it's also permeable. Water can easily flow through it on my plane. That is the where you have the aquifer. So how do you explore groundwater? You have to teach. You have to do what? You have to do what? You have to do what? But you must know where to dig, isn't it? In order to know where to dig, there are essentially two methods: scientific method or non-scientific method. How many methods? 
Amen with God. Scientific news that you can prove it. That this is why it happens. Not scientific too. It's like uh, you can't prove it, but what? And this was a people. What is it? Let, let's look at non scientific method. In some places, it's like witchcraft. You know what it's called witchcraft? Eh? They will look for maybe something like two sticks, one stick, another stick. Then they cut a little bit so that they can hold it. Hold this one and hold this one. And now move around. Why they are moving around? They are still parallel. But when you get to where our water is, they will cross. Eh? Why it cross? I don't know. You understand? But <laughs> it's not scientific. That's not science, isn't it? Or at least you have no explanation. Even to science. Because at times, because you can't explain something, does not mean that it's not scientific. It is working. And that's what they do. And they are not having the interpretation. They are not having the forces. If they are using to achieve that one. There are other methods, but the one that we use generally, generally is. Uh, Electrical methods. There are other methods which uh, we have. Uh, the first time we talk about the experimental methods, we have the morphological methods, the electrical methods, the methods, so that we can do biological methods, the remote sensing, surface, geophysical methods. You know. So the, from the subsurface methods, you know, we the one that is very commonly used is electrical resistivity method. Who is not from, who is not from, uh, who has not done any science yet? Have you done elementary science? If I ask you that, what is an electron? Do you know it? Or correct? So people are just hiding their list, that this man wants to do exam. I'm not doing the exam, but I want you to follow me. We have a guy that we have a team, we have a correct function. So the technique that you use, the technique that you use for resistivity method is that you look for a way to pass current into the earth. And what you do, if you have you know, to the ground a metal, it can be a nail, nail it there, nail this one. If you connect back into it, we are expecting that some of the current will pass through the ground. But in between those two layers, where they are pass current, the, there is some kind of potential difference of the voltage. It will have changed. So you can measure from the laboratory, you can measure that one with full meter, the, the potential difference between the current that you you are to use the password to that uh, level. From there, from basic uh, Ohm's law, you know, look at the Ohm's law here. Ohm's law. Is there anybody in other level of physics or any other level of engineering? Anyway. Essentially, B is equal to Ohm's law. B is equal to what? What is happening here? B is equal to what? B is equal to I R. The voltage is proportional to the current. That's what it's all about. You know, we are R stands for resistance. But from R, we can get resistivity. We can get resistivity. So. But that the opposite, when you say something has high resistivity, that means that it has no conductivity. If the conductivity is low, resistivity is high. So, what you are looking for on the ground, when you send current that way, what you are looking for is essentially where you get high conductivity. What I said 
What I said, suppose we do not conduct ordinary thing. But there is nothing like pure water. There is nothing like uh, because all water that you find, they will contain the surfaces. I think chemists are there. They will contain the surfaces. So you have ions that make the water inside the ground conductive. So if you can discover where you have the high conductivity, then you can determine that this location that is over there. That's how to determine it. But your rest, your your resistivity techniques, the, the equipment that we use for it, parameter. Well, we can also say resistivity meter. You will also determine when you are carrying out your measurements, then you analyze it such that you not only know the depth, but you also know the distance. You know the location before doing it. But is that what you do most of the time? No, that's not what we do. Most of the time, when you do your houses, you just say, you just look around. You have your father here, you have your father there, and you have your father there. You know, that's how I say it. Every day, every week, you were here. You went on the back from the road, you see, with the toilet, that's all, most of the time. But at times it works, you know? At times it works. It was of, because of the geology of this area. You know, the, the geology differs from one place to the other. You know? So, but if you want to be specific, you are going to spend money, you, you, are, you are going to want to drill, bubble, then you have to carry out the investigation. Let me tell you one story, and it's a true life story. In the year 1969 to 74, my mom was selling a malacola. We usually had a water problem that time. We now, today by 11 p.m., 12 p.m., we go up the night, we take about two kilometers to go and search for water. We still need to go there about six or seven foot. We must, uh, we must get water at top cost. Years later, my mother is great anyway. It's not to the business again. I don't know what they do there. <laughs> Years later, we now dug a well. It was almost at the back of where we have our shop that time, and we have to wear that water that is very functional and is still useful. Then I asked myself, what was the essence of trekking close to two kilometers, risking our lives at night when we are walking over water? You know, what the Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. If we have had the knowledge of that, we have now what have you? Even the people that were powerful from us could have brought that place to your church for us. You know, so knowledge is critical in this uh, instance. So under this electrical resistivity, I have told you the techniques and the technique is universal. Just ensure that you have means of setting current to the ground and have means of measuring. The potential difference in between the current and the current. In fact, you know, so where you have position of high conductivity, you know that you have that little of water there. There will be some other things that will give you the rest of that. You know, that's why sometimes somebody says, I do physics, it's more of an art than a science. You know, because they are, and that's why you cannot use potential techniques. Right? What I mean by potential techniques? You have techniques like gravity techniques, uh, magnetic techniques, in which, because we are looking for small variations in the magnetic field, 
which is like a hoop, the back of the hoop without direct. You know, it's going to be very expensive and cannot, they are all the, they are all the, uh, they have, you know, very expensive products. We will not give you precise location like the rest of the people. So, we now know, so far, if I ask you, what do you know? You should be able to tell me, at least, I know what happened. Isn't it? And we can't tell you. You can say, you know, saturated, saturated point. We know aquifer. Are you following me? Then, we know that in order to locate where water is, you can use a uh, esoteric method. <laughs> when we are young, when somebody, when money is stupid, you say you want to buy the teeth. You now say, go and look for a key. Put it in Bible. Buy the Bible, put your hand. You know, you decide, you decide the name of so so. You say, say, what the Bible looks like this, you have bought the teeth. Whether it's working or it's not working, at least at the point to you know. But that leads to the psychology of those uh, people who need the key. You know, similarly to the other system method of finding water you know, and other methods. But the one that we recommend is the resistivity techniques. Yes, the ramper is expensive. But they say if the equation is expensive, try it for us. You cannot because it's expensive and you need to drill holes everywhere. Because even though groundwater can be found everywhere, it's not everywhere you find a cuffer. I will follow this. Groundwater is everywhere. A cuffer is not everywhere. You must look at it because I'm a child. How many people do I have a day? Because uh, everything is said, okay, we show 30 minutes. You know that it's more than 30 minutes. And as of now, I'm sorry for that. You know, they will teach you forgive <laughs> Now, if you are in a community and groundwater is the source of the water, you have to monitor that groundwater. What you do is that at least you must have a network of three holes. I don't know the water that you are using this community. So I know that at the somewhere somewhere that must be open. I guess that. You know, so you must have a network of or of, of green roads. Then you have one in which you are not charging from it, you are not taking water from it. You know, it's the water from that one, and when you are charging water from that one, you need to make operation from now and then. There are factors that are used to know whether there is safety. In the water you are taking or not. This is the specialist of uh, agro geologists. You know, when I was talking about passing current through the ground and like that, there are different electrode array, there are different methods. You know, the level where when I array, therefore, therefore, array, number year array, and so on and so forth. I have talk, talked about the groundwater monitoring. It says that you must have, you know, let's say you have four bubble here, you have network. What about that's when you are taking water, you are not taking from here, then you compare water from that with other metal water. Then you're able to decide when it's like you are using this one as baseline. The one we are doing experiment, you say this one is baseline. Then other ones, the one you are charging for, is Compare the water from there with that uh, of the baseline. Be able to know whether the, the same problem with the groundwater or not. So that is, uh, you know, the when we talk a uh, small grammar here, I feel personally contributed to groundwater before. The answer is this. You know, when we are having a problem by a parameter and we want to be sure that 
we will still gather the children. I am my team. We made our own laboratory parameter, which we call fabrica of resistivity, resistivity meter by one of the light talk. This one was coming by the local journal physics volume 13, they are taking part of five. With this one, you may not get exactly that you get with the parameter, but it still works. And you can easily get the, the paper. I'm talking to the student now. You can easily get the paper, you search it, you improve on it to see what you can do. Then, on this groundwork, you got groundwork at two. We have, uh, I am sort of my team. We are four in the local states here, yeah? in the other state, in the local state, looking for groundwater. Some are for water seed, some are for projects, you know, FSC projects, PD projects, and so on and so forth. So we look back to the nature of a prospect that where they are not able to get groundwater in this region. But we also have to call the mapping of groundwater in the next. So, so apart from investigating for the purpose of academics, as program we had, I was employed as commissioner, I mean, chairman of the government. Since the chairman of the government, I was and I have my own agenda, which I call the WWW. The first of all is water. Uh, water, 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 and welfare. Water, welfare, and welfare. So, I found out that in the scripture, when Jesus Christ was tested, he got the way. He went to the media and said, Give me water to them. And that, that one was his time. He said, Go and call the husband for me. He said, I don't have a husband. He said, I don't have a husband. Not that I don't have a husband. The first one will not die. Another one will die. And so forth. So the man was worried that who is this person? He now said, If you know the person asking for water, would have given him water. He said, ah, this water was good for Abraham, our father. When you look at the Abraham period and Jesus Christ period, at least this kind, it's more than 700 years. It's even going to be a close to that. If a source of water can survive for more than a thousand years, then that source of water is sustainable. So what we are saying is that the most sustainable of all this water is well water. That's the most sustainable. And I am sure that during my time at Kansu Channel, I gave them more than 100 wells in our different locations in the Indonesia government at that time. But I said, hey, sir, some of the they said, what are you get? And is it it? What are you get? And what are you get? And you? Now, it's time I, I gave the community. In fact, the community is uh, at Ito Town, behind the garage there. I gave them both. But there are some people that are fighting me for this guy. They said that the ball is not functioning. I went there, I put on the, the car, and what I was watching now, so I knew that it was functioning. By the time I came back, they followed me through the night, they vandalized the water. So what I can have enemy. What I do was, what I can have enemy. So those that vandalize that my home, they are the enemy of the people. It is strange that 
But as uh, most people are not even used to what people are doing, when we are young, maybe in the 70s, early 70s, you can get somebody to turn on the water, you get it. This generation, which I call digital generation, they don't even know about public water again. And it is the responsibility of government to provide public water. So we are using this place, whether council, whether state government and federal government, provision of water is safe and not for the citizenry. You know, and if a government fails to give water to the people, it is the enemy that we need to. But when they give water, I have seen people when they want to build their own houses, they will cut the pipes. You know, people cut the pipes of government. They are what? They are the enemies. So what are they telling me? Hmm? So it is on this to Mr. Vice I want to say, what I don't get telling me, but I'm stopping here. I appreciate the, God, the entire management of this for giving me an opportunity to say what this is about now. We look at some small technical aspects, we measure some of our contributions, we have told you the most sustainable water, and we have also told you that no what I don't get in the what I also get in. Thank you and God bless you. Please permit me to start on the already established protocol. I want to really commend the guest lecturer for giving us such an erudite, you know, delivery of that lecture. It was very interesting. For me, it looked more like a classroom lecture than this kind of atmosphere that we find ourselves. Uh, I have the privilege of Handling the microphones, let us just ask from the technical point of view, sir. You mentioned that the conductivity of those ions are key to determining the spots where we will find water. Now, I know that other ions should be at play. Uh, there are OH minus from water, H plus, and other metal contaminants. Are this part of the control short process? Okay, sir. So I'm sure other people are ready, especially students, to ask their questions. The guest lecturer will take all of them at once. So if you are prepared to ask questions, please can you signify by lifting your hand so the microphone can come to you.
Okay, please, can you write down your questions? And we'll come around to collect them. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor, for the presentation. I just drove into the school this afternoon, so I saw uh, the banner. I decided that I'll be part of this session. By the way, I just finished my master's uh, with Belts University, uh, Mechanical Engineering. I work for the Water uh, Multinational with headquarters in very good Denmark. Uh, perhaps I just need to mention their name. Uh, it's called World Force. Uh, as you know, we manufacture pumps, water pumps precisely. Uh, so my job here is to look at the Nigerian markets, Liberia and Syria. In the course of working, I have seen a lot of water challenges, and um, that's why I decided to stay back. From your experience, which no doubt you've been around for a long time, what would be your recommendation in solving the water challenge in Nigeria? And I'm glad you also mentioned the part of humans are not energy of water because just a couple of days ago, I came back from Bentley in Abia States and we went to water infrastructure on the line. So, on one hand, we want to say government is not providing the water infrastructure. On another hand, we also have humans vandalizing the water infrastructure that uh, we are going to provide. But just looking forward, how do we uh, solve the water challenge? in our dear country, Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for a very interesting lecture. Um, I want to deviate a little bit from your lecture. You talked about the water table, starting from precipitation to the runoff to the surface water, the underground water. And it kept me wondering. In my village, we have people before rain holders and rain makers. Is there any scientific basis for those people holding rain? When you are doing a function, especially during the rainy season, people pay that they don't lot of money to hold the rain for them. So it got me thinking when I look at this electrical resistivity, is there any relationship with that? Or the magnetic technique or what? I don't know if you experienced it too in your place. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prof. Please, I'm still expecting more people to ask questions. Thank you, sir, for that. Uh, Lecture, wonderful lecture. It was a teaching, not lecture, it was a teaching. My question is I have an observation and a question. First, the question, okay, observation first. You know, we have many of the ground water here in order. Case study of my own, my house. I have on the ground water. Who would like to know that this one? The ground water I'm consuming every day. It's pure. Other pineapples have on the ground water. How do you determine that whether it's on the ground water? The majority of people living in North I know, even around this bed, dry, out of the ground water, even inside them, they are using on the ground How do you know that it's pure? How do you consume this water? And my observation. Uh, I will say since I was born, I've not seen tap running. Running like what I observe is underground water that we pump to water. Everybody is using Runs into the, the, the toilet and inside the house. So, I don't know if it, is there any problem that this underground water is going to cause Planet Earth. Since we are in planet, uh, planet change. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ale 
Dr. Shola from the Department of Biological Sciences. Uh, so I want to ask, I'm more interested in the management strategies. So uh, I want to know, since we have various uses of water, like Idaho or industrial uses, I want to know, is there anything that one can do that may result into poor management of underground water? Well, what are those strategies that we need to consider? Uh, as part of uh, underground management of the I mean, management of underground water. Thank you, sir. Please, this is a very interesting opportunity for students to ask questions. How many students are ready to ask their questions? Please. How many students are ready? This is for students. Or can you write your questions and Send them back so that we give it to the guest lecturer. Do we have any other person ready to ask questions? Okay. If you have written your questions, can we have them? Can we have them on to have written any questions? Okay, thank you very much, sir. I'm sure we have come to the end of this session. Can I now call on the guest lecturer to respond? Thank you, sir. I will start with the question of the moderator. We asked about what are the components or the elements that can lead to high productivity. Why try everything? That can cause polarity, will cause high productivity within the water. People will think, you know, we have measured high loss and so on so forth, it will cause high productivity. You know, it's a good attribute for discovering water in, in the other ground. You know, then uh, there are some who talks about the water power. You see, ordinarily, if you have an open aquifer somewhere, let's say somewhere there, and it's a hill. Maybe the water charging to that aquifer is a hill. Through capillary, or at times when, when you are dealing with bubble, you see that when you get to uh, when you get to the aquifer, the top water will cost out. If they do fair, they are going to your because of the pressure difference. But at times that pressure will be normalized. And then you will need pump to pump the water to higher reservoir by look at the CO2 gravity. You know, so you also mentioned about how do you store vandalism? My own experience, what I did was that this is where we cited problem two when I was asked to chairman. We called the community, we said this one belongs to you. Manage it. If you like, destroy it. If you like, protect it. It's not, it does not belong to the government, it belongs to you. Something that belongs to the government, people don't care. But something that belongs to individuals, they protect it. So once you hand it over, you can meet the community leader, you can meet the landlord in that area to know that this thing belongs to them. They will do something, they will protect it. When I was a commissioner for the Digital University, we insisted that there was a minimum mark that you must obtain before you can be promoted to the next class. We said five credits, including either English or math, so we did say compulsory, either you consider a rather strong in English, or you may be strong in English, good in math, or strong in math, and so on so When we started the policy, some school, in the salary job, they destroyed their school. When they destroyed the school, my, my boss, Dr. Kennedy, he said, What are you doing? I said, I don't know the school. He said, That's true. He said, It should be doing good until the community understands that is their purpose and they recruit it. It's when they are recruited to school that they came to us. You know, so I will open the school. Ownership is critical. That's what the people will give for their, for their land. If they say this land is your father's farm, 
you are willing to be like that. You don't even know the issue. You have to know that this child belongs to the father. You protect. So the same thing, when the government project is cited, it must be handed over to either an individual or community leader of you know, a group of people that will maintain it. That will, they will use it to also maintain it. So, and you, on the issue of pump, there is nothing you can do. You only require pump. So, where you are working, my daughter, you cannot be out of business. Pumps will also always be required. Then, uh, somebody talked about very old as and scientific, uh, scientific methods. You see, the, there are some people that claim that they can make green form. You know, they find some people that know that they believe that the, the water droplets for and things like that. You know, but the one that you believe don't look at it is uh, we don't know the science behind it. But I suspect it's metaphysics, not physics. You understand? You know, so, as any other metaphysical, the way it operates is different. Like, for instance, prayer is metaphysical. You know, you pray that Lord of hosts, Lord of heaven, do this thing for me. God may do it for you. You may do it for you, I have to do it for me. But you are praying the same prayer. You can, you can be asking the question why that? You know, this one is simply for me. Maybe your own time has come from. Your time will come in this just way. <laughs> so, I don't think that one is metaphysical. I'm a scientist. I don't know much about metaphysics. So, I don't know the formula that they use. Uh, somebody said they are using groundwater. He said, How do we know it's pure? There's no pure water. You understand? You can only have good water. If your water is not pure, your water contains dissolved material. So if you want to investigate, you can come to the lab to check. Uh, I think they have, we have a chemistry laboratory here. They will tell you what the water contains, whether it's something that is damaged, that they still not to be to the air, but there is no pure water. You know, you have, when I was coming yesterday, I saw somebody selling water. I said, what you water? I said this is the right one. We are just pumping it. We can't guarantee whether it contains uh, jams or whatever. We just put it. You know, so unless you do scientific investment by coming to the laboratory, you can know the, uh, the level of uh, level of contaminants, whether it is injurious or deadly. You know. Um, when someone said he has never seen that cross, I don't have, I don't need to ask for your age, but I know that he must have been born after seventies, after early seventies. You understand? I can guarantee that. You see, it is very strange. It is very, and it's very unfair that we cannot, we cannot even manage water. You know. It's on, it's on, it's on call for public water. is supposed is something that our government, you know, if the government of the state cannot bring public water, what is it bringing to do? And it's not peculiar to the state. It's what I know the states in the country. And you have rivers here and there. You know, what is, what is so difficult in having your water? Pumping the water to the station and heating it up, and this will fill the gaps. So, a generation that cannot manage water without managing oil, that's the price we are having, is our problem. So, water that is never out, that's what that's what running in the 60s and in the early 70s. But by the time you are getting to the late 70s, anybody that is born in the late 70s, I know that most of us will be in the late 80s and 90s. They will, they will just think that uh, running down to the public domain is a terrible story. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Ali, I think you have to be a very good person. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. 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 Thank you very
well, big well, with no sustainable. You know, but if you want to be sending water and grab the hole, of course you pump in the hole and you protect it. Then what you now bet is that what is the economy of pumping it? Because if you are running on this, if you don't have public uh, electricity, if you are running on this, how much can you send it? You can use basic economic scale and determine whether the your selling of that water is justified based on the amount of energy the culture pass of money spent on energy in order to achieve that. Level. So I uh, thank you for the questions which you have asked, which I've tried to answer. Another question which has not been asked, which I will ask and answer, is that we mentioned, we mentioned the flow. You see, the way that you use whole stock for current in empty flow, water, oil, you have the what, what government is what called the dusty dog. It's equivalent to whole stock for current. Dusty dog. But most of the flow is not dusty. You know, we don't have a big old, a big old thing as it's, they have established that one, that most of the flow are not dusty. But for an ideal flow system, I think uh, I permitted to sit down. Thank you and God bless you. Having been guest lecturer, sir, for troubling you once again, our students have been sending in some of these questions. We have okay. three questions now cited by students. Yeah. One of them is concerning water issues that we have in Nigeria, especially. Drainages are always hot and are also dirty, and they are also dirty water bodies. What measures do you think we can take as individuals to fight this, especially with the changing climate issues? The next one, the next one is: Are there innovative technologies or practices that? Promote sus the sustainable extraction of underground water. And finally, why is it that when I open some bottles of water, it gives the gas sound like it is carbonated? Thank you, sir. Okay. See, somebody talked about drainage. Drainage is about planning. But any time, you know, when you have a community, you must have a plan. So, drainage to multiply within this. But most of the time, it's not planned. And I'm happy that we are talking to young people. Because you said that uh, when a man reaches 60 years of age and he jumps up and he says, A man has come. A man has not come. A man is going. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Planning, that is the job of the planners. And when you look at people who are doing civil engineering, it should, it's also part of what they must do. You must start the water that is getting out of the city, where is it going to? I sat in the east and I saw some that yesterday. In about two or three houses, they have this big tank. In the house, as the rain was falling, they were collecting water in the house so that they would do the best system when there is no water outside that they use that water. That is using your brain. Anything that you can use your brain for, based on simple science, is what is called innovation. What is innovation? What is innovation? You can use, you can create small ideas. You add it to 
and then uh, 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 this technology will save you and you know. So, I'm taking the point to answer the second question, innovative technology. So far, we have been using assistive technology. But can I give you something to try for free? Because I've been thinking about it, you know, and it, it can be improved. There are what's called the acoustic paint impedance. Acoustic impedance. When you send waves, well, as we're talking now, as I'm talking, when the waves strike that wall, it's going to be a reflected part. And so we can determine the length of that place. And that's what the bar is using. So if you have a device, let's say you drive on top of the other like this. That can give certain sound, if I can build it, it could be solid, it could be solid. It's going to be striking sort of there. The structure that is striking will be reflected. Some will be transmitted, some will be absorbed. If you don't have a data that can read this, you can begin to see whether you analyze it for water or for water material. That is what I'm submitting as my own innovation, which you can try your own project, whether it will work. I don't know, but to do some this, you know. So, somebody said he has he has spent gas at when he opens his own uh, pure water for hot water. I don't know the company will definitely, you know, classify it. That's why. Then there will be a danger too. If you are getting the water from this thing, then. It's going to give us gas and going to give you pressure. And the uh, tape is also combustible. If it's fine and high quality, you can use for combustion. And that's why some of, them are, some of our experts they can package it very well. You know, and uh, ensure that you get clean energy from it. For those who understand the business. Um, for the students that are here, I thank you because you asked questions. For the for my colleagues, lecturers and uh, senior people that are here, I thank you because you left your time to come and listen to my school. Thank you and God bless you. Let me appreciate uh, Professor Fela once again for that well delivered lecture. Thank you, sir, and God bless you. When we look at the topic of today, it's in line with the university objective that uh, our activity or even research study must be able to address one of the goals of the United Nations. Sustainable development uh, goals. You know, we have 17 goals. When you look at this uh, particular topic, it's addressing goal number six, which is centered on good water and sanitation. So, once more, Prof, we thank you for this lecture. So, the next activity is the Presentation of gifts. Presentation of awards to best student in the College of Natural and Applied Sciences. And to do that is our dean, Professor Atasi. You are welcome. Thank you very much. See you standing on the CC protocol. While I want to really appreciate the guest lecturer, and I want our guest lecturer to know that we have a tradition of trying to motivate our students. So we have students at the end of each academic session that have a valid CGPA at any level. So it helps to, to keep it up and at the same time also encourage others. On that note, 
we have some of our students that have excelled very well in their academic career. And then we have one of them and our Could be dungeons of a, the guest uh, lecturer to do this so that they will appreciate that yes, you came and they did not only listen to you, but they have closer contact with you. I call the first person. Ola Tuji, are you here? Yes. And gender sensitive. The next person is there. Onupo Rafael Odera, Department of Biological Sciences, CGPA 4.90. CGPA 4.90. Onupo Rafael Odera. Is he there? The HOD. Department of Biological Sciences, can you get a prize for your students? Yes, that is the actual job of what day in man. This is a uh, biological sciences. Well, 